<laughs> the Black Viking is back and ready to react. What is happening, Magnusites? So, I went to check my email on Yahoo, and I saw this on Yahoo News, and I said, I absolutely must react and see if I agree. So this is three reasons the WWE is doomed. Let's see if they're on point. Huge week for the WWE and it's about time stock up 20% after they announced they finally surpassed 1 million users, subscribers to their network and they had some Royal Rumble controversy, a lot of insider stuff. Brian the Barber Sazi joins me with three reasons why Vince McMahon's baby is still doomed. So the stock's up 20%. Royal Rumble's got a lot of chatter out there. There's some heat. There's some excitement. I like the app, which is always a good sign for a company, and yet you say Vince is doomed. Why? Well, I'm dropping the body slam on here on WWE. First of all, they recently reached that 1 million mark. They had a promo in November. They're having another promo in February ahead of WrestleMania. So essentially, they've invested zillions of dollars to acquire free emails, and I think these people are churning off. But ultimately... There's a couple long-term problems here. One is aging talent. Hoaxer might be 65 years old. Ric Flair might be 120. So as those people, which are still on camera and driving that connection with a lot of the millennials, a lot of the baby boomers, age, they get off camera. Why are you watching this program? Because the kids come in. I, I've done some research on this. I had a, a 10-year-old boy yep. just for the sole purpose of watching wrestling with me someday. And now that he has, I realize he likes the young guys. And, and I like the old guys. Well, and that's how that works. It's a circle of life, Brian. I just, I just feel as though the, the connections to kids these days to, let's say, our Roman Reigns are not as strong as when we were growing up. When we were growing up, let's say, if you're under the age of 50, you saw programming every week on live TV. You got right. connected with it. It was the only cool thing on TV. Right now, you're, WB is competing with a lot, a lot of eyeballs. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so you say aging talent. You say the new guys. No one likes the new guys. And uh, I think a lot of injuries. I watch WWE. I watch Raw. I watch SmackDown. I watch, watch these pay-per-views. I feel as they're taking a lot of risks. And a lot of these uncalculated risks to I get, keep the guests keep uh, the matches non-repetitive right. are going to lead to injuries. One big one has been Daniel Bryan. You know, he was out for almost, I believe, a year. If your most popular wrestler is not on camera, you're losing eyeballs. But even analytically, if you don't want to think about these things, they have more, their attendance is way down. Their ticket prices are under pressure. That's, from an analytical perspective, that's very worrying. Okay, so from an analytical perspective, but, but the, the, your point, your third point is that Vince McMahon is all they got, which to me is the greatest selling point. Mm -hmm. No one has lived their gimmick in the business sense or any sense like Vince McMahon. The guy's been way ahead of his time. I, I think the WWE Network mm -hmm. is going over the top in a, in a really creative way. They've substituted out the pay-per-view model where you take your cable box and you pay people to straight online subs somebody's going to be doing that. HBO is trying to knock that off. There are a lot of companies trying to do this. Vince McMahon's the only one with the squash to go ahead and do it himself. Is not having this man on your side a good thing. Uh, well, let's think about if Vince McMahon were to drop dead today, who steps in? Is it Triple H? He's been leading the creative team. Is it Stephanie McMahon? We don't know. I don't think that succession plan has been very articulated to Wall Street. Ultimately, everything you see on TV each week is the byproduct of Vince McMahon. He remains very in the trenches week to week. And if you pull him out, like a Starbucks, if you pull Howard Schultz out of the trenches, what happens to the company longer term? And I don't know. Well, someday we all die, Brian. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's when those people take over, they've been running them. The, the company's been kind of churning along. It's the circus. Or should you just kind of give a Vince exception? The stock itself, mm -hmm. if you look at it just on cash flows, you look at just kind of what they do as a traveling little troop all the time. First, you come to the conclusion it trades a discount. It should be private mm -hmm. because it's got this McMahon lunacy discount attached to it, which we could argue about all day. But, but really, this is not a company that's very expensive on the stock side. It was last year in the 30s. But they're trying a lot of experimental stuff, and they've got huge margins. It, it seems like a buy story. Well, prove to me, I think that the, the, the net the companies prove to me that the, they can acquire viewers for the network without giving things away for free. And I think their churn rate is very high. The churn rate is basically people that come on and drop off after their free trial. They need to show me that they're making money on that. But secondarily, they need to get their live attendance back up and push through higher ticket prices, not just in the U.S., but also globally. And I'm worried about those things are not happening. All right. He says it's not happening. I say it is. Two guys who definitely will both watch WrestleMania arguing about the WWE. Did we convert you? Are you going to check out? Are you going to short the stock? Why don't you let us know in the space down below? All righty. So what I want to do here is I want to read the accompanying article, okay? I did not include the video because I couldn't snatch it off the website. But 
said it has been a good week for the WWE subscriptions for their online streaming network surpassed the 1 million mark and the stock surged 20% but all is not well in Vince McMahon's kingdom according to Brian the Barber Sozies of Belus Capital Advisors Sozi says that the key 1 million mark only came because of the free promos not proven ability to attract paying customers Sozi has three reasons the WWE is still doomed, but Yahoo Finance's Jake Mackey remains unconvinced. Check out their verbal throwdown, which is what we just saw. Now, I'm going to go over, because it says a little bit in detail, those three reasons, all right? So it's aging talent. Hulk Hogan is 61, Ric Flair is 65. Both have recently been brought back in front of the camera in an attempt to bring back the over 30 set of the WWE fold. Well, I don't know. I don't know about that. I think they're a nostalgia act, and yeah, it does get us to watch, but I don't think if we didn't watch, it would bring us back solidly because they're only on once in a while, you know. Um, but Sozie points out that they will continue to age and have to end their on-camera days. When that happens, which is pretty much now anyway, um, the key over... 30 demographic will stop watching since they don't connect to the new set of WWE superstars. We we only can't connect to a lot of them already. Yes. Yahoo's financier Jeff Mackey disagrees arguing that WWE is programming for both people like him and his 10-year-old son. He likes the young guys and I like the old guys. It's a circle of life. So the unrelenting as the title belt match argues back that in this new media landscape, WWE is no longer the only cool thing there uh, that there is for preteen boys. That's true. Right now, WWE is competing with a lot of eyeballs. Well, they say they don't have any competition, correct? Uh, injuries. They're taking a lot of risks um, to, I guess, keep the matches non-repetitive, so he argues. Those risks could lead to injuries. In fact, they already have one big one, which has been Daniel Bryan. They talked about this in the veil. You know, he's been out for almost a year. If your most popular guys are on camera, you're going to lose eyeballs. Um, I don't know how much eyeballs they lost because of him being out, but I do know that Bryan did leave, lose a little bit of steam. But as soon as he came back, I mean, <laughs> man, let me tell you something. When I was at the Royal Rumble, those yes chants were just as loud as I remember them being when I was at WrestleMania, what, 28 that night at the Raw? When we left, and they were just shit, man, look. Anyway, those injuries uh, may be a part of the reason attendance is to go down. And last is Vince McMahon. Uh, it says, uh, Mackie says, WWE CEO Vince McMahon in the league's biggest, is the league's biggest asset as a wrestler, promoter, announcer, and more. McMahon is seen as the heart and soul of the empire. Uh, he's the gatekeeper. I knew that. <laughs> Don't nothing get on TV unless it goes through him, from what I understand. Sozie, though, says that makes him a huge liability. That's true. Uh, he's a genius, and he's his own worst enemy all at the same time. If Vince McMahon were to drop dead today, who's to step in? Um, wrestler turned executive man executive uh, Paul Levesque uh, better known as Triple H is running creative would he step in McMahon's daughter would she step in ultimately everything you see on TV is what you know is a McMahon's that's true so what do you think Watch the video, been through the article, which was slightly more detailed in certain sections, but pretty much said what the video said. Do you think that it's still doomed? I personally don't think that it's doomed. Um, one thing with them is that they've always made new superstars. Let me tell you something. I never thought that they would come back when, I mean, after the golden age, the first golden age. Hogan, Warrior, Savage. I never thought they would ever come back. I thought it was dead. Dead product. And then all of a sudden, Attitude Air. Oh my God, these new superstars are being born. New wrestlers 
We got Stone Cold Steve Austin. You got The Rock. And so on and so forth. And it's just like, whoa. It's like, I never thought it would happen again. Then they had another minor surge with uh, Brock and John Cena. You know, that area. You know, the ruthless aggression era. Um, and, you know, but it wasn't as big, you know, it wasn't as big as um, the Attitude Era or, or the 80s, you know, Golden Era. So... You know, and it really hasn't hit, and you know, uh, something's not right right now. Um, I don't think the aging talent has anything to do with it, but it is part of it in that guys like Hogan, Flair, Undertaker, Rock, you know, these are guys that are nostalgia acts. These are guys that are part-timers. These are guys that, you know, even Brock, you know, they come in from time to time, but they're, they're such a huge hit the ratings probably spike, but they're not there long term. And I, I really don't know if, I mean, well, it, it's it's been shown. The, the, the current guys can't or have not at least shown the ability or maybe it's just the booking, you know. So what, what I'm saying is what they're doing with their current roster is not meeting or beating what they did in the 80s and in the 90s. It's not. You know what I mean? So, um, and then they got the injuries. Um, you know, Daniel Bryan did get hurt, you know, and he does have a point with that because now that I think about it, with Reigns being hurt and he was out, he lost a lot of fucking steam. Then he just came back after Ron. He came back and then, you know, he had lost steam. And then with Brian being introduced again, he just lost it. I mean, you know, the crowd turned on him. And, you know, and then he's making dick comments. And, you know, he's not ready. He's not. You know. Um, and then Vince. Yeah. So, I mean, I think he had three legitimate points. Although the aging talent one, you know, I, the, the whole Hogan and Ric Flair thing, it, it's it's not. We don't. We even all of us know that we're not counting on Flair or Hogan to make us watch every week because they're only on once in a fucking while. Once in a fucking while. But um, I wouldn't say aging talent, but I would say nostalgia acts. You know, like they're bigger, biggest stars. Only Chris Jericho. You know, got, you know, they only come back once in a while. And we know that they're going to be gone. They're not going to be with us. You know, for the long run. And, you know, it's just, you know, it, it, the fact that they don't have talent that can, you know, run, run things without nostalgia acts coming in. You know, like, for example, back when you had um, The Rock, um, Kurt Angle, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Chris Jericho, The Undertaker. Back when you had all those guys right there in that era, if Hogan came in, hey, he would have been a great addition, but he wouldn't have been like, oh, yo, Hogan's going to, you know what I mean? You know, like when you find out The Rock is going, you're like, yo, The Rock's going to be on tonight. I'm watching. Guys I know that don't even watch wrestling call me like, yo, you know the rock's coming? Yeah, I know. I watch every week. I know he's going to be on, but they tune in. The casual watcher, viewer, which is what they say. The only thing they care about, tune in to watch them. See that? So, anyway, you know, back then, they wouldn't have needed nostalgia acts. And now they need them. That's the fucking problem. Um, I covered the injuries, you know, slowing down Reigns and Brian. Uh, and we are already, I could talk all day to our puke coat hangers about Vince being uh, out of touch. I mean, like I said, he's the genius that built the place, that gave us so much. And at the same time, he shoots himself in the foot. Plus, there's that argument also when you look at the attitude there that they would have never made those changes unless they were forced to. Good competition makes you better. And right now, I wish there was competition that made them better. Unfortunately, their best competition right now is NXT, and they own NXT. So it's not competition. It's just another one of their products. 
that they're not pushing mainstream yet. And they need to because Triple H is doing a damn good job with that. Post your comments down below. Let me know what you think about this article. Press the like button. One million subscribers. Woo!